What's good? It's Wug. Please, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you were into the fight talk. We have Douglas Lima, 32 wins and 9 losses, taking on Michael Venom Page, 19 wins and 1 loss. This is the rematch between the two. In their first fight, Douglas Lima stopped Michael Venom Page via second round knockout. And this is taking place at Bellator 267 on Friday, October 1st. Now, Douglas Lima is a former three-time Bellator welterweight champion. And Michael Venom Page is a former kickboxer turned MMA fighter who, you know, basically beat a lot of guys, knocking them out, submitting them in very, very flashy fashion. This is one of those highlight reel machines. Like even before he was fighting top notch guys, he was going viral with like fight after fight with like spin kicks and head kicks and flying punches. Like most people will try to throw a Superman punch, but only few will land one, let alone knock somebody out. Well, Michael Venom Page, again, he's kind of been a high highlight reel as he was kind of working up the rankings and then he fought a pretty good fighter in an aging Paul Daly who pushed him a little bit took him down a couple times made the fight close and that fight actually resulted in a decision win for MVP but people were pretty much saying okay he's a highlight reel guy against like lesser tiered fighters but what happens when he fights against you know the Bellator elite well he got his opportunity against as I mentioned former three-time champion in Douglas Lima and you know it was a pretty even fight throughout the first round. Douglas Lima did end up scoring a takedown after they had a couple minutes in the stand-up, fighting pretty evenly. I thought Michael Venom Page controlled distance well, kind of backed Lima up a couple times. Lima would try to find his opportunities to close the distance on the much taller Michael Venom Page, who's abnormally tall for the division. Michael Venom Page is about 6'3", but on TV, he looks about 6'6", just because of his length in his reach and also his fighting technique where he keeps a wide stance with his feet wide apart in sort of a bladed stance. Think uh, Leona Machida, think uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. But given Michael Venom Page's almost like Jack Skellington-like dimensions, it looks exaggerated when you see him in these contests because few will carry that kickboxing karate stance in an MMA fight. And in this fight between Lima and Venom Page a couple years ago, that ended up being Michael Venom Page's undoing because, you know, he was looking for these different opportunities to launch these ambush-like strikes against Lima. Lima much more experienced, was pretty composed, very patient, and he was landing some leg kicks on Michael Venom Page because Venom Page will kind of like, you know, stay light on his toes, jump in and out, move around the cage a lot. He likes to dictate the distance and the range that they fight at. He doesn't like people, you know, just crowding him. If he does, he'll keep a, a tight guard and kind of try to pull you in. And in an almost Anderson Silva-like way, with his legs being so long, he could actually do a lot of work off of his back, even if he's taken down. Now, he doesn't have the same ground experience as Douglas Lima, but because of his physical dimensions and his, you know, limited but somewhat substantial ground experience, he's actually submitted guys in some of his early fights. Well, as I said, they hit the they did hit the mat in their first fight, but it was kind of neutralized where nobody got a lot of effective work done in the ground game. So that's how they closed the first round, came back out for the second round, and they went right back to work. And Venom Page was moving in the same way, looking for his ambush strikes. Kind of landed a couple ones that, I wouldn't say they rocked Lima, but they got his attention. Again, Venom Page has been a devastating striker. Just look at his most recent fight against Derek Anderson, which was another one of those kind of step up opponents for Venom Page. You know, he's half the guys he fights d don't have Wikipedia pages. And then he fought, like I said, Paul Daly, Douglas Lima the first time, Derek Anderson, and a couple others, David Rickles. Well, as they're fighting in the second round, as I said, Douglas Lima was landing some effective leg kicks to Venom Page's lead leg. And Page will switch stances a lot. He'll go southpaw, and then you'll switch to orthodox, and then start, keep on with the same movement. Well, again, he was uh, Lima was looking for that leg kick, and he timed this one perfectly, where he kicked Michael Venom Page's lower leg as Venom Page was going to ambush with a Superman-like punch. So when Lima landed the leg kick, the lower leg kick, it swept. Page's leg out from under him, he falls forward and almost in one motion after landing the leg kick, Lima follows with a punch because since 
the page is falling forward, his chin is totally exposed because he's trying to break his fall as his foot got swept out from under him. So within a millisecond, Paige is falling forward. Lima catches him. As soon as Paige, you know, fell forward, broke his fall, he caught him cleanly, knocked him clean out. Landed maybe one or two hammer fists, which was academic at that point. The fight was over with that first strike because when Paige got hit, he then fell back and he was pretty much unconscious by that point brilliantly timed it looked expert and it looked like he being lima exposed michael venom page's lack of experience well going into this rematch you know lima's actually lost a couple times since both by decision once in a step up in weight class against Gegard Mousasi, the current middleweight champ, longtime UFC fighter, a longtime strike force fighter. Gegard Mousasi is one of the best middleweights in MMA history, in my book. Very, very underrated. Well, Lima pretty much hit a wall when he fought Musasi. Musasi wins that via five round decision, and then Lima loses his welterweight title when he comes back down to 170 to defend his title against Amazov. Amazov pretty much made that a ground grappling contest and wore Lima out, just won the rounds basically. Unanimous decision win, title changes hands to Amazov. And now this is Lima's first fight back. And again, this is a rematch against Michael Venom Page, who since his loss to Lima has won five fights, four of those via knockout. So the highlight reels continued for Michael Venom Page after that one loss against Lima. So what do I expect out of this rematch? You know, Michael Venom Page wins, again, the vast majority of his fights via knockout. And Douglas Lima, believe it or not, has not been stopped with strikes since he fought Matt Brown back in 2007 in a promotion known as ISCF Invasion. That's how far back this was. Matt Brown since has gone on to have an extraordinary, or if not extraordinary, a very good, extraordinarily long UFC career. Has fought pretty much the who's who in his division. But yeah, back in 2007, Matt Brown stopped Douglas Lima with strikes. And Lima, in the past 14 years, has, has not been stopped again with strikes. So... I think that Michael Venom Page's chances of a knockout versus Lima are pretty small because of how good defensively Douglas Lima is and just how well-rounded and experienced and schooled and just talented Douglas Lima is. I mean, he's really improved a ton over the past six, seven years. Like he had lost his title once to uh, Koreshkov and he won that title back versus Koreshkov. And uh, he lost to Rory McDonald, lost the Bellator title, and then he ended up winning that back versus Rory McDonald. So he gets back the losses that he's had in Bellator for the most part, not so much the last couple losses that he had or his earliest Bellator loss to Ben Askren back in 2012. Put some respect on Ben Askren's name. I know he didn't exit his career pretty, but he beat Douglas Lima once upon a time in 2012. Well, again, I don't think that, Doug that Douglas Lima is going to be stopped by Michael Venom Page, nor do I think, look, it was a very skilled move when Douglas Lima did kick Page's foot out from under him and connect brilliantly, perfectly timed with the punch that followed. But there was, I think, a shred of luck involved in that. Now, there's a shred of, of luck involved in everything. When, you know, Anderson Silva had Forrest Griff, Griffin missing with his punches and then ended up dropping him with a jab, basically, off his back foot. A lot of luck is involved in basically all of these fights as well as a ton of skill. So both skill and luck was involved, I think, in that knockout with Lima over Page. But the conditions had to be so right because if Lima threw that leg kick just a moment after he did against Page, he could have gotten clipped with that Superman punch. Like, this is really a game of inches here. And I don't think he's going to be able to replicate that same level of success. And I'm sure Michael Venom Page has, you know, done his due diligence in researching why he and or how he got dropped versus Lima, how he got swept, then dropped, versus Lima. So I don't expect history to repeat itself in that regard. So I actually believe that Michael Venom Page will be able to co control distance better. I think Douglas Lima, being a little bit older now, you know, Venom Page isn't, isn't a spring chicken himself. He's 34 years old, and Lima is 33 years old. And look, to be fair, Venom Page isn't going to present the same type of grappling challenge that Virtuoso type of ground level ability that Amazov has. 
So Lima doesn't have that to worry about, nor does he have just the all-time level experience to worry about as he did against Gegard Mousasi, not to mention being up a weight class. By the way, both these guys are kind of big welterweights now. Like Lima, a little less so. I mean, he did have that middleweight fight at 185 against Mousasi, but Michael Venom Page's last three fights have all been at 175 pound catch weights. Last three fights, so he hasn't made the 170 pound welterweight limit since like the since the end of 2019. So the weight and the weight cuts and the weight ends are going to be something to pay attention to. Again, Michael Venom Page is huge for the welterweight 170 pound division. Again, 6'3 with a 79 inch reach. Douglas Lima's reach, by the way, is 74 and a half inches. So like almost a five inch reach advantage for Michael Venom Page here. But yeah, the weights is going to be something to pay attention to. Like how comfortably can the now 34 year old Michael Venom Page get down to 170? That is kind of the wild card in my book. But if everybody is feeling at their top, Logic should tell you that Lima should still outclass Michael Venom Page, but I think that there's something to be said about Lima coming off a two-fight losing streak and just not being as explosive, I think, as he might have been a few fights ago. Now, he could do certain things, like the way he kind of roughed up Rory McDonald against the cage in October of 2019, three fights ago, to beat Rory McDonald. But Page, again, he's, he's so dangerous in so many different ways striking-wise. Where, although Lima has more ways of beating Paige, I think that the ways that Paige could beat Lima are more pronounced. And I think that he'll actually catch Lima. And I think that he'll win enough of the moments in the stand-up to where I actually think that Paige is going to pull off not a knockout victory, but a decision win over Douglas Lima. I'd be curious to see what the odds on a... The odds on a decision win are probably a long shot because the reputation of Lima... Given his experience and championship pedigree, should say that if anybody wins a decision here, it should be Lima. But I think that, you know, the frustrating kickboxer, karate like style of Michael Venom Page and the way that he kind of ambushes his way in and out, I think that he'll make enough adjustments where he won't get caught and dropped cleanly by Lima in the way that he did in the first fight. And I think that because of his ranginess, he'll be able to neutralize some of Lima's attempts to just kind of push him up against the cage. Not to say that he's going to hit any reversals or get Lima in a compromising grappling position. I just think that there are going to be enough moments in the stand-up and there are going to be enough minutes per round where Paige can pull off like a three round to two or a four round to one type of win against Douglas Lima. I'm probably in the minority in this call, by the way. I, I'm sure the vast majority of people are picking Lima to beat Paige or if they are picking Paige to beat Lima, it's probably by knockout. But again, Lima hasn't been stopped via strikes in 14 years. I don't expect that to change here. Although, I mean, if somebody was going to do it, it would be somebody as unorthodox and as dangerous in the stand-up as MVP. I just don't think that's what we're going to get here. Instead, I'm going Michael Venom Page via decision. I think Lima's going to have some trouble closing the distance, especially when you start getting into the, you know, the third, fourth, fifth round, even if Lima is the one with a lot of five round experience, whereas Michael Venom Page only has one five round victory. And it was that fight against Paul Daly. So although a lot of the evidence is kind of pointing in the direction of a Lima win, I'm going to kind of go off the beaten path here. I think something's going to happen to where Michael Venom Page is actually looking more comfortable than we expect him to look and is having more moments, successful moments in the stand-up versus Lima than we might expect, even in the slow rounds where he, where Page isn't knocking somebody out in highlight fashion. I actually think he's going to win some rounds here against Lima. But yeah, let me know what you think about this fight in the comments. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are into the fight talk. I'm Woog. Thanks for tuning in.